the world of education? How's the global innovation? Let us do the calculations, use all our imagination We'll subscribe, no hesitation, with my corroboration And that's a bet I will not hedge Listen up, cause it's dead on the edge Today's episode is a flashback interview from the Imagine AI Live conference in Las Vegas in March of 2024. The interviewer, Chris Madden, is CEO of Good Future Media and a co-founder of the conference. He sat down with Michael Moe and Brent Payas to understand AI's massive impact on education and to discuss how building a platform like Dash Media is strategically advantageous for investing. Michael Moe is the founder and CEO of GSV, and Brent Payas is the VP of Growth Research and Strategy at GSV and head of Dash Media. Welcome to the pop-up podcast at Imagine AI Live Conference. Michael Moe, Brent Payas, thank you for joining. Michael, you just got done with your presentation. How are you feeling? Well, it was great. Uh, it was really a tremendous group of people here. Great energy, great ideas. Yeah. And um, so it was fun to have the opportunity to, to speak with them. Yes. And uh, for those who don't know, Michael Moe is a legendary venture capitalist and investor in the education space, uh, among others as well. And Brent is heading the Dash Media. You guys are building your own media organization as well. Very exciting stuff. So, Michael, we talked a month ago, maybe two months ago now, and the speed and rapidity of AI is, is so fast. What's changed in, in your world since then? Everything. <laughs> And I think that's going to be the reality for the foreseeable future. So I think with all that change that's taking place, what's really important to understand is what isn't going to change. Mm -hmm. And so you know, I think when you, we're making predictions about, uh, you know, what what's you know, what are specific technical things that are going to, you know, be the thing to focus on. I think that's missing. You're going to miss the forest for the trees. So the real point here is to understand again what's 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 not going to change, and and what are the big the really big ideas. So what's not going to change? Well, one thing that's not going to change is that human beings um, are going to be part of the equation. Um, they're not going to be replaced by technology. It's not going to be like, you know, robots running the world. Yeah. It's thinking about how people um, can work with technology, work with AI to create and accelerate ideas that advance humankind. Mm -hmm. And that to me is as clear as day. What's also clear is how this is going to unleash a wave of entrepreneurship that we've never seen before. One, because some people, you know, the, what, what they thought was their career is going to be upended. And I guess, you know, that sounds kind of scary. At the same time, what that really means is obstacles create opportunities. And you're going to mm -hmm. see how these people are going to have the benefit of having a lot of different tools at their disposal at very low cost that, that will be able to do amazing things. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, going on what's not going to change, I think media and, and social media, the, the presence, like that's not going to change. And need, for companies and individuals to have a presence on social media, like that's going to stay a necessity. And so I, with Dash Media, what's your philosophy on that? What are you what are you guys trying to build? Well, the way it really came to be is for us, research is the foundation of all of our investing activity. So Michael started blogging before blogs were a thing you know, 20 something years ago, where you're essentially just publishing your research, sharing it with the world, able to engage an audience, get feedback, and really build a community around these ideas that are really the, the big ideas, the big mega trends that we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. So with Dash, we've expanded, there's a newsletter, there are a set, of, a set of newsletters that we put out ourselves, we have podcasts, videos, we have a contributor network that we're building out where we're actively asking entrepreneurs, builders, fellow investors, Share your ideas here. We'll become the distribution network for you as we have nearly 40,000 people who subscribe. And a lot of these people are university students, founders, bankers, people managing sovereign wealth funds, venture mm -hmm. capitalists, like they're all over the world. Um, so we want to amplify the, the builders and the fellow investors who are looking at these themes and mega trends that really get us excited and just kind of, you know, interact with, with a really engaged audience that way. So mm -hmm. you, you said, what isn't going to change? And one thing that won't change is the foundation of investing is research. And so how do we do that more effectively? How do we do it more efficiently? Um, you know, Dash Media is a good way for us to organize that and effectively make that 
available to the world and the world gives us a lot of comments. So we get smart from that too. Yeah, it's a very open source way of doing your research where you're doing your research and you're putting it out there for other people to benefit from as well. And Absolutely. critique. Yeah, benefit and critique. Mm -hmm. and, we'll, and we'll get ideas. And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's an important part of our strategy. Yeah, so 40,000 uh, subscribers, that's, that's a good, healthy number. What have been some of the challenges on your road there? What do you see as like, pain points that you're trying to overcome? We only soft launched this. We built it on Substack. We released it to the world as Dash Media just in October. October. And we've done, and initially was just a standalone newsletter. Uh huh. So since then, we've done no paid advertising. We've just been consistently churning out our research, our research pieces every single week. We've been sitting down with experts in different, whether it's education, entrepreneurship on these podcasts. And we've just been really focusing on kind of the product and the output. Mm -hmm. um, we are really excited to enter a phase of serious growth where we really lean into growing this audience and, and uh, getting people engaged again, all the way from your ambitious undergraduate student in college to Fortune 500 what's, executives. What's interesting is 65% of college students say they want to be an entrepreneur or work at a startup. So, you know, the rate, rate today, there's something like 210 million students in universities around the world. So that's a big potential audience if we, we with the, let them know that we're a free resource for them. And again, if for us, it just gets us connected to that many, much more innovation and interesting ideas that are going on. Yeah, definitely. I, I think organic's the way to do it too. And that's, that, that's some healthy growth from just doing orga organic. Thank you. Do you have other mediums that you're trying to expand into? So you're doing podcasting, newsletters. How is your social media game? Ironically, since we were investors in Facebook, Twitter, Snap, um, Nextdoor, um, not very well. It's one of these things where we really haven't focused on it. Yeah. And now we are because yeah. to your point, it's it's critical for our, our future growth. We've, at LinkedIn, I think we have a pretty decent presence, but again, mm -hmm. it just, um, it hasn't, it's, it's not, not been a priority. It's been non-existent and, yeah. and, and it's, that doesn't work. So that is a, a focus of ours and you'll see us in the, uh, our social media yeah. presence increase pretty significantly. All it takes is some focus and then getting a, uh, getting the face of the of the brand too, or like people that are, are willing to to speak on camera, to talk about the research, to break it down to small bite-sized pieces uh, would be my, my advice to you, I think. Well, you do a terrific job with your um, interviews and podcasts. And I, what I love about interviews, it's for us, it's just research. Yeah. You know, we're just learning from people we're talking with and, and hopefully the, the, the audience gets an opportunity to, to learn with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely. Uh, it's um, quite the treat that my job is to talk with interesting and cool people. So I appreciate that. Uh, let's shift to education for a little bit. Where, like for me in public education sphere, I, th I think that it's going to be maybe the last sphere to be, to allow AI to impact its processes just because it's so, so bureaucratic. The teachers, like, you know, they, they know the way that they've, they've done things. They like the way they've done things. And, you know, AI can help so much in education. It can be such an equalizer. Yeah. And how do you get that across to teachers in public schools across the country? First of all, I think it has a, AI has an opportunity to, to truly be a, a great equalizer or democratize learning mm -hmm. in a major, major way. What's you know, super important to understand is that I think the, the public is finally at a point where status quo doesn't, it, it doesn't work. And so this idea of, you know, well, we're just going to keep on going and, you know, maybe we'll throw some more money at it and we'll use, you know, spend a little more time. People are saying, you know, 200 years is long enough. We need to have change today. Some of the positive things that are going on, though, include the fact, I mean, not only do people realize that underprivileged communities, um, you know, really education has become the civil, civil rights issue of the day. Mm -hmm. One of the things that AI is going to do is it's going to provide more transparency in terms of what's going on in the classroom or a school or a school district, not 10 years after the fact, but real time and be able to make ways that, that you can adjust and, and actually make uh, changes and improvements mm -hmm. to help students learn, which is the point. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, when teachers realize how much time they can save, too, uh, from a grading, correcting perspective, but also from lesson planning. So bingo, and, I, and just to, to pile on what you were saying, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but you're, you're so right, because a lot of these ed, ed tech solutions um, that have you know been in the marketplace here before have actually increased the amount of time a teacher needs to, to spend on something. Yeah, learn something new. And right, so here, you know, what you're seeing, again, with, with the right application, dramatically reduces the time, whether it's grading a paper or creating lessons plans or all the different things that, 
you know, teachers spend a lot of time doing that people don't appreciate. If you can actually save time for them, mm-hmm. you know, they should love it. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, there's foes to it because, you know, there's, there's you know, unbelievably um, sad, but there are actually groups in, in the system that don't want change or don't really care about what happens mm-hmm. to the, with the students. But like I said, the good news is I think that's changing pretty dramatically in a country where, you know, we can't uh, as a country agree what day of the week it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you basically have Democrats, Republicans, independents, something like 75 percent are, are looking for school choice and, and improvements in school. So that that's that's encouraging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's been a big uh, shift in that end of uh, all the homeschooling and private schools. And I wonder, uh, you know, in the ed tech space, what's your do you know of products like um, AI tutors or online online tutoring? Any companies or insights there that you'd like to share? Sure. I mean, and again, I think that's going to be, um, you know, it's the it's the future where everybody has their own uh, tutor in their pocket. Mm-hmm. I mean, we were an investor in a company called PhotoMath, where literally you could take a picture of a math problem and instantly not only give you the answer, but how you get there. And if you need more help, give your own, you know, AI tutor that would help you. Mm-hmm. Now that business was sold to Google. And so we'll see how Google does with it. But there's companies like Primer. I mean, there's a, nut, there's a very a lot of exciting new AI businesses out there. Um, this Primer that I just referenced is uh, was was being created uh, out of Arizona State for the last seven years, and now it's being commercialized. You know, again, it basically uh, everybody can have their own chief of staff, their own tutor. You know, yeah. again, very low cost and be to do all these amazing things, get you on stock, accelerate you where you're, you know, proficient. You know, go back where you're deficient. What's the best way to learn? What are the things that, you know, that, that interest you? Because you can't learn if you're not engaged. Yeah. And so thinking about that, all of these things are, are part of what AI has the potential to do done right. And a lot of interesting entrepreneurs that are, um, are coming af- after that. It's a very exciting future, I think, in, the, in that space, for sure. The conference that you have coming up, can you talk about that? It's only two weeks away now. Yeah, so uh, for 15 years, we've done a, uh, the ASU GSV Summit in partnership with Arizona State, focused on education technology. We've um, started that with, you know, you know, you you have 500 people here, which is awesome. I think mm-hmm. we had 300 people the first year of the ASU GSV Summit. Mm-hmm. But this year, we'll have 7,000 at our core event, about 900 education technology companies present. Two days in front of the core event, which is, which is April 15th through the 17th, we have something called the Air Show. And what the air show is, it stands for AI revolution. And what we're saying, what I've said is that AI is like air uh-huh. because it's invisible, it's, it's ubiquitous, uh-huh. and you're going to need it to live. And so two days in advance, um, we have this air show with a bunch of startup AI ed- ed tech businesses. It's free. So at that event, we'll have, we'll, you know, we have over 10,000 registered al- already. And so that should be, a fun, um, should be a fun time in San Diego that weekend. Before wow, the, yeah, Sandy. Do you have any headline speakers you mentioned? Or? A bunch of great speakers. Yeah. Vinod Kosla, who's one of my... Oh, Vinod Kosla. You know, he's, nice. he's spoken a few times at our conferences, and he's... Um, I don't know if there's a smarter person on the planet. Uh, Reed Hoffman, you know, the founder yeah. of LinkedIn, yeah. uh, will we'll be there. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we got uh, Paula Abdul... Uh, Paula, um, Paula Abdul. Paula oh, really? Abdul will be oh, okay. there. This nice. will be fun. Yeah, and, for and, sure. Well, that, that is, does sound like a great lineup, and... Um, but thank you so much for coming to our inaugural event here at Imagine AI Live. We're already talking about next year because this first one has started off to great success and hopefully get some of those uh, bigger speakers as well. I mean, we've, we've loved our speakers, but to get like uh, Reed Hoffman would be <laughs> incredible in the future. Are you planning to stay tomorrow as well? Again, congratulations uh, on you. this event. It's, uh, it's obviously a home run and it's something really exciting to build from. I'm sure all the people here uh, this year are going to want to participate in the future. And I certainly do. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm, I was really looking forward to being here the full time, but I've got a, an issue that's come up that that's kind of pulled me back. Brent will be here the full time. Okay. Great. I'll be here tomorrow. Well, you'll be able to uh, hear my presentation tomorrow, Brent. And I'm uh, looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm uh, hosting a panel too for some AI creators. So awesome. Yeah. It's one thing to be here talking with two people, but to be talking in front of all those people, I, it's been a while. So I'm a uh, a little nervous, but uh, yeah, I think it's going to go well. Thank you, do fine. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, well, anything else you'd like to share with the audience? No. Again, yeah. this is a terrific event, um, and thank you for having me at it, and, and Brent, and yeah, we're we're excited to be aligned with what you're doing. You're doing what you're doing is great, and uh, it's all about 
how we accelerate innovation and entrepreneurship for good. And yeah. That's what we're about. Definitely. Well, it was great talking with, with you a month ago on Zoom and now here in person. And I hope we can do this again three months from now and, and catch up. Look forward to it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.